Hello Ferrari fans! So if you look into my history, I historically buy Kyosho F1 cars. But uh, these came up at a decent price, so I thought I'd try out this Dido brand. And they were listed as Kyosho, so let's just take a look at the packaging. We got five cars here. I do like this packaging. You know, it's pretty minimal. Uh, you don't have to keep a box or keep a display stand, you know. It's just you're going to end up with a car. You have to assemble it though, and I'll, I guess I'll try to assemble one here for you guys. But uh, obviously there's a biography on the car. It is officially licensed, so someone at Ferrari approved these models. There, it says Kyosho here, so I have a suspicion they're going to be just as good quality, hopefully. We got some tech specs, the dimensions, uh, V12 engine, 330 horsepower, so... And then this is uh, everything in this series. It says part one and part two, but uh, it seems like it spans between 1952 up until the year 2003 is the newest one I see. Okay, so I would assume that this set must have come out at least in 2003 or a little bit later. Alright, well, let's just uh, crack this guy open and I'll put this together and then I will cut away so you don't have to watch me put all of them together and then uh, we'll talk about each car in a little more detail although there isn't too much to talk about it's really about just looking at the evolution of uh, F1 design by Ferrari okay so these screwdrivers are pretty much worthless they're not the right size for the screws so I, I wouldn't recommend you use those I just have this cheap like uh, electronic screwdriver here okay so Interesting, we got two parts to the base here. Uh, hmm, I guess I should actually look at the instructions a little bit. So, the axles go in. You know, they're the same, I think they're the same. Okay, well. So, bear with me guys, I apologize. This axle's here. Then uh, this piece of plastic goes on top. Hmm. All right. Then this axle goes here. Somewhere. Yeah, there we go. And then there should be a seat piece. Yeah, you got a little blue uh, seat and some silver uh, suspension pieces. And there's a mating pin here. Alright, so after you sandwich the axles in with the plastic pieces, I guess this die cast metal part goes up here. Okay, well, there you go. So I'm going to cut away and do that for uh, the other ones. And maybe it'll save the card backing so you can see it, take a look at them. But uh, give me a minute and I will be back. Okay, so it wasn't actually that hard to put the uh, cars together. It's just kind of hard to do when you're doing it through a camera screen. But I think you guys will do a lot better than I did. Okay, so this car here is a 1951 375 F1, F1 and there's a 4.5 liter V12 up front. And this was a car f that was the first for Ferrari to, that allowed them to win a world championship beating Alfa Romeo. So being back in the 50s, this is still a tube frame chassis and I assume the bodywork must be made of aluminum. So it's pretty nice. I mean, you got the little blue seat in there. Unfortunately, the windshield is just painted silver. So that's not particularly accurate. You know, I think Kyosha could have easily made that clear plastic. But, uh, you know, they simulated the uh, suspension, I guess, as well as you could in uh, 164. And you look at these really thin exhaust pipes coming out here. So that's pretty well done. Some detail on the bottom as well. So it's nice to see, you know, the actual year of the car. So you can kind of put these all together. And very unlike most Kyoshos, it actually says when this casting was made. So it was made in 2004. Okay, that's actually new for me. I've never seen a Kyosho with a manufacturing date on it. Okay, so we'll let this uh, spin around here on this little spin thing. And... Let's pull out the next car in chronological order. So it's a big jump in time. This is from uh, 1988. This is the uh, F1-87. And now this thing has a 1.5 liter 
V6 turbo. So that sounds pretty small, 1.5 liters, but with the turbocharger, this thing is making 720 horsepower. So obviously it's gonna be really fast. It uh, allowed Ferrari to come in second place for the constructor's title. Uh, McLaren came in first in uh, 1988. So the bodywork now is moving to a mix of carbon fiber and Kevlar composites. So this model itself, you know, you got the nice brown seat in there. Looks like there's some tiny paint rash developing here. Let's see what the bottom is. Does it say? Yeah, this one, 2004. So the whole series, I guess, is from that year. Okay, the tires are really great on these models. You know, nice curvature to the sidewall. It, they do roll quite nice, I guess, if that's important to you. And then the printing itself is really nice on all of them. There are no decals. These are all, you know, tampo printed, so... Oh, I apologize. I think I'm wrong. Look at this wing. I think that's got to be a decal because you can see the wrinkly clear part of it. So I am mistaken. Okay, well, uh, yeah, you can see obviously it's quite different. You know, you got these wide uh, side pods with the radiators in them. And unfortunately, this should probably maybe have some detail there, paint in there, but it's not there. Okay, the wings aren't too super thick. They're relatively uh, thin for plastic, I guess. So, it's alright. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one here. This is from 1992, and this is called the Ferrari F92 AT. Now the, the bodywork is all carbon fiber. There we go, sorry. And uh, the engines have changed. It's now a 3.5 liter V12, making 735 horsepower. And this car has an interesting design feature. It's got a double bottom. It's called the double flat bottom. So you'll notice here, there's a diffuser pan down here. But if you look uh, here, let me get my pick here. You'll notice there's an air gap here, right? So the, the carbon fiber has a bottom here of the red. And then there's also another layer of... So basically it's like having two wings underneath this vehicle, creating a lot of downforce. So it's quite interesting design. From the top view you can see you know a little bit of that wing is is right here that double bottom there. Okay. So this is the first Ferrari to have what's called a raised nose design where the tip of the nose is actually not in line with the bottom of the car. So this is all air up here, right? So you can see a little bit. It's not raised a lot like modern F1 cars, but it's their first. So the purpose of that is it allowed better airflow underneath the car. But this car wasn't very successful, only won two races. It came in fourth place for the Constructors' Championship and Renault won it that year. So you'll notice here the paint isn't super smooth. Okay, well anyway, so there's some details there. Yeah, interesting wings going on here. How they uh, connect to that. Interesting. Okay. All right, so I guess that's it for that one. Let's move a few years on. This is now 1996, and this is called the F310, F310. This is the first Ferrari to have a three liter V10 engine in it, making 715 horsepower. And uh, it's also the first Ferrari to have the dashboard on the steering wheel. So all the, the tachometer being the most important one is on the steering wheel now. Uh, this came in second place for the Constructors' Championship. Renault won it that year. And then you'll notice here, they introduced these barge boards. I'm not sure if this is the first Ferrari to have the barge boards. I want to thank Red Room Diecast for uh, telling me what these things are. I, don't, I didn't know what these things were, but they're on all, pretty much all modern uh, F1 cars now. And I guess it's to uh, improve airflow to the uh, radiators here. It's helping direct airflow to the intake for the radiators. Okay, so you can see again on uh, this one, it has like this double bottom. You know, this red is a underside and then there's an additional wing underneath. So it's creating a lot of downforce with the double bottom effect. Okay, so let's take a look. Mm, no sponsorship there. I feel like there should be, but... And then you'll notice this axle or something. That tire doesn't look really horizontal, but okay. Some interesting printing. I'm not sure why there would be an N or a Z there and an E there, but there it is. Black seat there. Hmm. Shell sponsorship. And then you'll notice here on this one how much higher the noses become. 
So quite a difference there, right? Okay. Nice gold wheels. Only the exposed axle bothers me, but... Okay, so the last one in this lineup is from the year 2000. And now Michael Schumacher is driving this thing. So this uh, car, though, is called the F1 2000. And uh, there's a 3-liter V10 engine, same as the last one, making uh, 810 horsepower this time around. And it's this car that allowed Schumacher to get his third uh, driver's championship. And this is the first, uh, well, this car is part of the early beginnings of the dominance of Ferrari in the, the decade of the 2000s. So they pretty much dominated everything in that decade. Yeah, mostly because of Schumacher, I think, but also I guess their cars must have been pretty good too. So it's definitely looking like a more modern uh, car, where you got the barge boards here, and uh, well, these are still kind of vertical. More modern ones are rounded as well, but uh, you can see the high nose here, and uh, you'll notice the treads here. I believe the treads were done there to maybe try to slow the cars down, less rubber on the road. Okay. Uh, let's see here, some other details. I think these must be the exhausts, I would imagine. Pretty interesting. Okay, sponsorship is nicely uh, printed on there. Okay, so bottom there. So I think uh, one nice note uh, I want to mention on the, all these model kits is there was no like extra flash or like badly molded parts. I didn't have to trim anything or sand anything down which is kind of common when you make model kits. But all these pretty much went together well. You, you just gotta sometimes press really hard to get the pins to seat into their uh, their mating holes. So, yeah, I can highly recommend these, these uh, Dido slash Kyosho kits here. Uh, so obviously, you know, in 1950s, it's a totally different kind of car, but I, I do like the styling of these like teardrop uh, racers. So, but here we go into in 1988, and then 1992, 1996, and the year 2000. So that's from Saturday Night Live, guys, or the year 2000. Um, yeah, so you can see a very wide, shorter wheelbase, but very wide track. Still a wide track, longer wheelbase, but much more narrow body. Now this body is like, like half, really small in size. But again, uh, it goes back to a shorter wheelbase. And then this uh, goes back to a longer wheelbase, but it's more narrow. But it also has uh, these treaded tires, I think, for less grip. So, very uh, blocky. Very blocky again. Still blocky, but now we're getting into more swoopy nose contours and wing profiles. So here are the... Well, well let's lean this way. Here's the front view. So it's quite amazing. I mean, I know if I sat in this car for real, I'd feel really low to the ground. But look how low this car is. I mean, you're laying on the tar almost. It's quite quite crazy. And then with the modern cars, these guys are almost laying down, and their feet are up here. So it's almost like you're driving a, a bed at 200 miles per hour. So the nose here, you know, the nose is down on this one. This is the first supposed raised nose from Ferrari, but it's barely raised. And then this is more like the, the modern cars, where the tip of the nose is very high up. So there's less, I guess, better airflow underneath the car for that uh, diffuser belly pan to function properly. Uh, you'll notice here there's a double-decker wing here, double-decker wing, or maybe even it's three layers. Double-decker wing, but really narrow gap there. And then technically that's a double-decker wing, but the bottom is so far away from the top, it almost looks like one wing. So, uh, you'll notice obviously the older cars, they don't have TV pods, whereas these modern cars have uh, little things on the top here, and those are holding television cameras. Okay. What I don't understand is what what's the silver nub here on the back of this wing. Maybe that's a rear-facing uh, camera, I'm guessing, uh, but I don't know. I'm not an F1... Uh, a uh, die-hard fan, really. I'm just using this this hobby to learn about F1. But uh, if you if you know better, please leave a comment. What is that thing? Okay, then. Well, I guess that's the comparison of uh, the evolution of this set of F1 cars. If anyone's interested, here are the cards for the remaining uh, 
cars. So let me uh, actually back out here. And uh, so this is the '88 version. You know the biography, the F-187, and you got your technical specs there. And uh, again, the same. This is all duplicated on all the cards. You know the rest of the collection. Here's the 1992 version, F92AT, bio there, assembly instructions, pretty straightforward, and then the biography, a nice graphic. Okay, here's the 1996 F310, same stuff, okay, but I just want you guys to see the this tech specs there if you want to pause it. Alright, and then the last one, year 2000, and uh, here we go, tech specs on that one, so. Yeah, I, I think I could recommend the, these. Um, I didn't, you know, some of them look like they're having some paint rash developing, but they're from 2004, so I don't know. And they're also red. Red is, seems to be the most susceptible color to uh, paint rash in my history of collecting. But uh, you, they're pretty straightforward to put together. And if you're going to modify it with that additional paint, it's already taken apart for you. And, you know, you could always do it later because they're screwed together, so. I think these Ditos are pretty nice. Uh, I rather like them. So, if you're an F1 fan or a Ferrari fan, maybe you want to take a look at these online and see if you want to purchase some of your own. Okay, well, thanks for watching again, and uh, we'll see you around.